Logic Pro 11 comes with its own AI mastering assistant, and today I'm going to show you how to use it in conjunction with some manual tools to get fantastic sounding masters very quickly. Let's get to it. One note about this is you do need to have an M-series chip in your Apple computer, otherwise mastering assistant will not be supported. So if you'd like to see a tutorial about mastering without the mastering assistant, I've got that right up here. Don't you worry. Otherwise, you should be good to go with the tools you have. To load the mastering assistant, all you do is click right here for mastering. And it is going to go ahead and analyze your project and get a starting point. This usually takes like 10 to 30 seconds, and so it's just enough time for me to tell you about my coaching service. If you would like to study logic and level up your skills in a one-on-one -on -one session, that's a service that I offer. Uh, check the description down below, and there's all the information you need to know about it. Okay, once it's done, you'll now have a mastering plugin on your stereo out. And if you click that, you will see everything it came up with from analyzing your song. And right off the bat, it's gonna be just way better just by hitting that button. If at any point along the way you wanna bypass and hear the difference, click this loudness compensation button and then you can toggle the bypass. What this is gonna do is bypass the inevitable volume boost that happens when you master so you can hear a fair comparison on what the mastering assistant's actually doing aside from noise. So go ahead and do that and we can toggle back and forth between it. A little tighter, a little more punch, a little more width. And then you can start to mess with some of the other tools in here. You can press excite here and it's just gonna give you a little high frequency boost, kind of excite the high end on your track. I like that a lot. It's very subtle, but it definitely helps. You can control the overall width and spread of your track right here. So that's gonna be how wide or narrow it sounds. So that's very mono, very stereo. I just push it a tiny little bit until you get a nice improvement in the overall spatial feeling of your song. You don't want to go too far with it because then you get weird stuff happening. <laughs> Over here on the left side, you'll see a few controls here. You have an auto EQ that it auto generated based on the analysis of your track. So that's huge and saves a ton of time, just gently balances everything out. This auto EQ slider will control how much of that EQ curve that it auto generated, how much of that is being applied to your track. So 100% is like you just one for one, what you see there is what you're getting. If you pull it down, it's gonna be overall less of that corrective EQ. So if you want it to feel smoother or you don't quite like what it did, you can pull that down. Or if you really like what it did, you can push it up and add a little more. And there's no right or wrong answer here. Just use your ear and listen to your track and figure out, does that sound better or worse when I do that? There's also another hidden layer here called custom EQ. And this will allow you to shape the EQ of your song along with the EQ curve that was auto-generated for you. So what that means is there's three bands here. You have a low, a mid, and a high. And you can push these to change the curve that was auto-generated for you a little bit. If you don't like the curve overall, just adjust the percentage. But if you wanna just kind of do some tone shaping and adjusting there, this is a good spot to do it. Without custom EQ, it's with it. And the name of the game with mastering is very subtle adjustments. We don't need to do crazy EQ moves or anything like that because that's already been done when the song was mixed. We're just taking the mix and getting it a little bit better, getting it to play back better across more sources. We're not trying to fix anything. Next, you'll see this character section, 
And this gives you four different characters to play around with. None of the controls change, just the colors change and it sounds a little different. So switch through these once you have it all dialed in and just see what you like the sound of better. It's all subtle differences, but you might find one that really highlights certain things in the song that you like. So I'll start with clean. I think I like punch for this. They all sound good, but there are like little differences throughout. So whatever strikes your fancy there. The last thing you're going to want to look at within the mastering assistant is the loudness knob, the LUFS and the LU range. So this helps you determine the overall loudness of your song. So a great way to do this is just to hit start, play the loudest portion of your song. And then you'll see these three meters here start to tell you how loud it is in loudness. Um, and then you can push more or less loudness if you want to get more of that. So it looks like we're averaging like 11.4, 11.5. So I kind of want to get that more in the 10 range, especially for a song like this, because I want it to smack. So I'm just going to hit play again and start pushing this dynamics knob until we get a little closer to that range. Although this plugin is really good, there's still a couple of things I'd recommend you add to your stereo bus just to take it to the next level. The first is a compressor. So go ahead and come here and just go get the standard Logic compressor. And my favorite mode for this is the Vintage VCA. This models the SSL compressor. So if you're familiar with that kind of compression at all, you'll know it is like top tier for your master bus and for good reason. So I'm gonna turn this up to 4.1, attack at 30 and release around 100. And then I'm gonna play with this threshold until I'm just getting just the edge off of the transients on this master. Because without it, just adds another level of control and punch and power to the song that wasn't there before. And finally, I've been loving using this lately, but it's the Tube EQ, the Vintage Tube EQ. So there's basically a few areas to focus on here. You have the low section, the high section, and then your mid section. So this is how to get just really quick tonal shaping done. And I'm actually going to turn off my mastering assistant real quick while I do this. The first thing I like to do is mess with the combination of these three knobs to just get an improved low end sound. There's not a right or wrong answer here. Just be really subtle and mess with the three controls until you get a nice improvement. I'm going to do the same thing on the high end. I usually like around 8K for this, but I'll boost and find what sounds good for this song. Finally, I'm going to go through these three controls real quick and see if there's any places I want to make more adjustments. There's a low peak, there's a dip, and there's a high peak. So these are just small booster cuts in the mid-range. Basically, just turn it up, change the frequency, and if you find one that you like, leave it there and turn it way back down, just so it's like a little bit of adjustment. I like this because it really accents that snare smack, like the low end of the snare.
doing the mid dip, same thing. Turn up the dip, which is turning down the frequency, and just adjust it till you think it sounds better. Same thing with the high peak, just like we did for the lows. You can also push this drive knob here to just add more color and saturation to your song, and I usually like to do that because it sounds good. Next, I'm going to bypass the whole plugin and adjust the output volume to make sure we are where we started. So without those two effects, here's what we have. With them. Generally, if I were to be doing this to a song, I would start with the compression in 2BQ before I add the mastering assistant on. But for the sake of the video, I wanted to spend most of the time on the mastering assistant. So if you were following along, I'd recommend just hitting this reanalyze section and it'll go through and take your recent plugin changes into account as it's reanalyzing the song. You can see it adjusted width, but it did not touch loudness, excite, or our custom EQ or anything like that. So, and the uh, the auto EQ has changed. So let's check it now. There you go. Easy mastering. I know this is not a full, all-inclusive mastering guide, but I do hope it gave you an insight into Logic Pro's mastering assistant and a couple of other plugins you can add to help your mix sound better along the way. If you did enjoy this video, please do me a huge favor and hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.